So today we're going to look at crosswind landings. Uh, before we can look at landings, we have to look at how to take off in a crosswind. How do we get up there in the first place? What we're first going to do is think about what direction our wind's coming from. And then we're going to put our ailerons in uh, an according position. So we have a right crosswind today, pretty strong right crosswind. Uh, we're on runway 23 and the wind's 300 at 15, gusting to 22. So you can see our right ailerons all the way up, our left ailerons all the way down. That means our yoke's all the way over to the right. And uh, that's going to help keep our right wing down as we begin our takeoff roll. As we speed up, we're going to slowly take out some of that right aileron correction. Not bringing the controls all the way back to center just before liftoff, but um, somewhere near center just before you rotate. We're also using some left rudder here to help maintain directional control as that tail gets pushed off to the left and the airplane wants to go right. We're probably going to stay on the ground uh, just a hair longer also before we rotate. Instead of rotating at say 50, we might rotate at 53 or 55. That'll give us a little bit more airflow over the ailerons, a little more authority to keep that right wing down from getting picked up by that strong right crosswind as we transition from side slipping with the wheels on the ground, cross controlled state, to this coordinated controlled state here where we have right rudder in and uh, we're climbing as we typically would with right rudder and uh, neutral ailerons. We're not quite tracking 230, since we're on runway 23, we're actually tracking 245 with that strong right crosswind trying to maintain the exact center line of the runway. As we turn our left crosswind here, we're going to retract our 10 degrees of flaps that we used on takeoff, and we're going to uh, make it kind of a short crosswind leg, given that we have such a strong tailwind pushing us, we don't want to get pushed too far away from the, from the airport, we want to stay close nearby in case we had any engine trouble, and uh, this will help keep us um, in that nice rectangular shape that we're so used to flying uh, traffic patterns around the airport. As we come up a beam or touchdown point, the first thing we're going to want to do is reduce power, hold altitude, lead off some airspeed as we typically would, and then go ahead and once we're in flap range, drop our first 10 degrees of flaps and start our nice gentle 500 foot per minute descent rate as we always do. The one thing that we're going to do differently here though is we're going to turn our base leg a little bit earlier and uh, and when we're on base, we'll do our normal 25 degrees of flaps. But the reason for turning base earlier is we have a much longer base leg to fly. Not physically longer, but we have such a strong headwind, it's going to take us a lot longer to fly that base leg. And we're going to be descending and losing altitude the entire time uh, until we get to our base to final turn. And we want to make sure that we stay in a position where we could make it back to the runway complex, to the airport. If we did have any engine trouble, we don't want to turn into the wind and then never make it back because we have such a strong headwind if we did have some sort of engine trouble. So making that early base turn, expecting to fly a longer base leg than normal, um, and then making our left turn onto final. As we make our final turn here, we can see we're encountering a little bit of mechanical turbulence. Uh, that wind's blowing over the houses and the trees and causing uh, quite a bit of turbulence for us. So. We're using coordinated flight controls at this point still. If with the right wing's down, we're going to use left aileron and left rudder to bring it back up. If the left wing goes down, a little bit of right aileron and right rudder to bring it back up. The most important thing to remember here as we come in and control our drift left and right is that bank is going to control our drift. Uh, having a bank angle towards the right here is going to cancel out that right crosswind. And it's really just a matter of finding out how much. Uh, extra right bank brings us over to the right, and as you can see here, a little bit of left bank brings us over to the left. More right bank here is going to bring us back towards center line. And you can watch those ailerons on the tips of the wings, especially as we get close to the ground, really moving around, up and down, up and down, trying to find that sweet spot of how much bank in there to control our sideways drift. Then rudders controlling our yacht, keep our nose going straight. So we have right aileron and left rudder input. Our right wheel's down, left wheel's down, and there's the nose wheel coming down. Now, why the nose drifted off to the right there with both mains on the ground just before the nose wheel touched down? The nose drifts off to the right and then snaps back to the left as soon as that nose wheel touches right there. And the reason for that is, in a Piper Cherokee, the nose wheel's directly connected to the rudder pedal. So if you have a whole lot of left rudder in because you just landed with a strong right crosswind, your nose wheel's way turned off to the left. So what we did here was to bring out a little bit of uh, the left rudder correction just before the nose wheel touched, actually letting the nose drift off to the right, knowing that if we kept all that left rudder correction in, the nose wheel would have touched pointing far, far 
over to the left and would have jerked the nose very hard to the left, side loaded that nose gear, put a lot of strain on the airplane, and also um, quite possibly if we uh, weren't quick to correct it, taking us off the left side of the runway. So landing in the Piper Cherokee with strong crosswinds, um, taking out a little bit of that rudder correction once both mains are on the ground just before that nose wheel touches is not a bad idea to uh, consider. Now let's go ahead and address what is our uh, elevator and what are our other controls doing while we're coming in for this landing. Well we can see here, slow down a little bit, see that elevator, or in this case the stabilator on this Cherokee, moving up and down quite a bit, making lots of little corrections, similar to what you would do, be doing on a normal approach to landing. Lots of small, minute pitch corrections, looking for the optimum pitch, controlling that sink rate, managing energy all the way through. Uh, to the last minute until the wheels touch. You can also notice the rudder bouncing back and forth quite a bit, looking uh, to control yaw and make sure that nose uh, gets lined up straight down the runway. Seeing it here at uh, regular speed, you can see just how quick some of those corrections are made with the elevator and with the rudder. And this is another approach here. Uh, you can see again the stabilator is moving up and down quite a bit, making lots of big motions but small changes to pitch and also really watch that rudder right before the nose wheel touches going back and forth back and forth looking for uh, how to control the uh, longitudinal axis of the airplane but also being ready to take that rudder correction out of there before that nose wheel touches down looking here we're going to set up to do a touch and go so flaps back to 10 holding the right aileron all the way over holding the right wing down to the ground applying power and we're applying left rudder, right aileron, and as we lift off here, transitioning to coordinated flight, crabbing slightly into the wind, using ailerons to keep the bank uh, level, wings level, generate maximum vertical lift, and then uh, using rudder just to control uh, P factor, using some right rudder to counteract all the left turning tendencies. This time we're going to go ahead and make right traffic around the runway to give you an idea. So now on our right crosswind, we're going up into the wind, and the wind's slowing us down. We have a very slow ground speed. And we're going to extend our crosswind leg, um, not physically over the ground, but a much longer time on crosswind uh, to give us time to get away from the runway so we don't get blown over to it. So we maintain our regular normal pattern that we're inscribing. And again, here on downwind, our uh, reciprocal heading would be 050 for runway 23. We're flying a heading of about 035. And as we come up beam our touchdown point here, we're going to reduce power, drop our first 10 notch flaps there and slow down the airplane, and we're also going to probably have to crab away even more now. Now that we're moving slower, we're going to need to take a bigger bite at the wind so that we don't get pushed back over. So now we're flying a heading closer to 030 even. Go ahead and turn our base leg, and remember this is going to be a very short, short base leg. Immediately to go into 25 flaps and not wasting any time before we turn on to final. Since we have that tailwind, we really do not want to sh overshoot our base to final turn. That's a critical error many pilots make that often leads to uh, stall spin accidents by overshooting base to final and then trying to overcorrect with you know maybe right rudder to bring your nose back around um, and making a skidding turn back onto base to final. So we're coming in here, making our uh, approach transitioning to the wing low method from the uh, crab method, keeping our right wing down, controlling our lateral sideways drift with uh, bank. And there we go, right wheel, left wheel, and the airplane's back on the ground, flaps back to 10, keeping that right wing down, back up into the air, transitioning immediately to coordinated flight, wings level, and right rudder for P-factor, climbing right back away to go back and do it all over again. So we're going to go ahead and take another look at this with a uh, left crosswind uh, component this time, and making left traffic for runway 5. A couple things to remember here. Uh, we're going to have a tailwind on base, so a, in a short base leg, starting that left turn early so we do not overshoot the base to final turn. Classic instance when a lot of pilots overshoot the base to final turn, try to steepen it up, they're low, they're slow, they end up stalling, especially in an uncoordinated state if they were trying to use left rudder to help them make that turn, and um, that's usually a very poor outcome in that circumstance. Remember, if you overshoot base to final, simply apply full power, fly coordinated, go around, climb towards the runway uh, complex, and fly over the runway, get good altitude, come back around the pattern, try again. So watch the flight controls on this one as we come in to land, especially watch what they do after the touchdown after you come in to land. Finish traffic, Cherokee zero seven whiskey, left base runway five, finish traffic. And we're all 
clear out here. We're on base. We're going to go ahead and keep the airplane right about 85 miles an hour. Go down to 25 degrees of laps. Final looks clear out there. Don't see anybody else coming in. We're not cutting in, cutting off anybody else. We'll fly out here till we get ready to make our base final turn. We want to make the turn a little bit earlier because the wind is pushing us. We have quite a tailwind. So it is a shorter base leg. We're going to go ahead and start rolling now. Venice traffic, Cherokee zero seven whiskey final runway five. Venice traffic. We're about 500 feet for our base final turn. That's perfect. Hands on the throttle. Hands not going to come off the throttle during the landing approach. That way, if we at any point anything looks funky, doesn't look good, we can immediately apply full power and go around, try again, or we can make small power adjustments as we need to to adjust our uh, descent rate and our altitude. Coming down final, about 80 miles an hour. And so we're crabbing into the wind right now. We're crabbed off into the wind so we can maintain center line that way. As we cross these trees here and get about a quarter mile final, I'm going to transition to the wing low method. That'll be right rudder and left wing low to side slip through the air to uh, maintain center line that way. I like doing that before we get to the runway. That way I know if I don't have enough rudder to actually bring my nose around. See my nose is off to the left here. I'm going to bring my nose to the right. Now I'm lined up and I do have enough rudder to do so. Sometimes the wind could be so strong you don't, and that's a good thing to find out now where you could do a go around with still about 100, 200 foot of altitude, rather than trying to do the go around when you're just five feet off the ground and dangerously slow. Do some power here and making very small pitch corrections, but large corrections with my flight controls. Those are very mushy. Hold my left wing down, touch left wheel first. There's the right wheel, and there's the nose wheel. Maintain in center line with rudder. Rolling all the way over to the left with aileron as we roll out here get slowed down in the crosswind, then we'll go ahead and take our first exit off the runway that we can safely make without using too much brake. We'll go ahead and, especially since there's such a strong crosswind here, get stopped in a straight line before trying to make a high speed turn or anything like that where we might risk tipping over in the airplane, especially in a high wing airplane where the gear is a little bit narrower uh, stance. Cherokee's got a pretty wide gear stance, a lot less likely to tip over in a crosswind. And we're crosswind correction with our air runs. We'll cross uh, the whole short line here, stop to our after lane checklist, and of course, report that we are clear of runway 5 at Venice. Get stopped here. Get our RPM back to a good, nice smooth idle. Venice traffic, Cherokee zero seven whiskey, clear runway 5, Venice traffic. All right. So a couple key f factors to review here. Remember we're going to add half the gust factor on final approach. A 12 knot wind with an 18 knot gust. We're going to add three knots to our final approach speed to keep us higher above stall speed. As we come up, get close to the runway, about a quarter mile final, certainly before we cross the threshold of the runway, we want to transition from a crab to a wing low method, which means left rudder in this case, right aileron to bring that right wing down, bring that right bank into the equation so we have a right crosswind. That way we can side slip through the air to the right, meaning we track straight down the runway center line. We'll touch down on the right wheel first, then the left wheel. And as we roll out and we slow down, we'll slowly increase that right rudder pressure to pin that right wing down to the ground and not let the wind pick it up. We'll roll out, maybe get rid of our flaps to help the airplane stick to the ground and lose some of that lift, apply light brakes to help us slow down and, and also stick to the ground a little bit better. And as we're rolling out, that left aileron being down will help yaw the airplane to the left since the wind is pushing the tail to the left and making the airplane yaw right. We'll probably still have to use some left rudder to track center line, of course, as well. If you have any questions still, go ahead and review the written portion of this course and then review the video before taking the quiz. Good luck on the quiz. Thank you very much for watching and safe flying.